Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's a girl for Nilungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, don't forget to subscribe if there's something that you guys want us to react to. Drop the link down below, and we'll be more than glad to react to it. I hope you guys are doing all right. I may stay blessed. So today, I'm going to be reacting to the difference between the Bible and the Quran. I made to that a very big shout out to the person that suggested this. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. Yesterday you proved that the Bible was not the word of God. How could you now quote the Bible to predict the coming of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Please explain. Yesterday was a debate. A format had been laid out. Originally it was 50 minutes, 60 minutes and 10. Both sides had 60-60. But the format was, whoever speaks first has 10 minutes at the end. Because every advantage has a disadvantage. So both speakers speak 60 minutes each. Now, with that format, you have no time to explain each and every position. So what is the Bible? So what do we consider the Bible to be? As a whole, per se, we say, this is not the book of God. And I proved it. According to all reasoning, according to the book itself, the internal evidence that Moses didn't write the books attributed to him, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John didn't write the books attributed to them, not only is it not the book of God, but it's not even the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. You're talking about 24,000 manuscripts, I challenge you, there's no two are identical. So you've got 24,000 different Gospels. Which one? You just picked to the pick that suited you, you accepted it. Who authorized you? Council of Nisi. They said, we take this, we take that, we take that. All the Gospels that are now accepted were not accepted at one time. It's now pick and choose what suits you, you accept it. That's what you have done. And you say now it's the Word of God. But now the Word of God is in it, in the book. The Word of God is in the book. The Word of the Prophet is in the book. The Word of the Historian is in the book. And pornography is in the book. Now I have to explain all that to you. I said, you see, I give you examples about the Word of God. Like in the book of Deuteronomy. You see the verse I quoted in Arabic? The same thing is in the Bible. Almost an identical idea is there. It reads, I will raise them up a prophet. I will raise them up a prophet from among the brethren like unto thee. And I will put my words in his mouth. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. So who is this I? God. He's speaking to Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. That I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren. From among the Bani Ismail. The Bani Israel are being addressed. Is that from among your brethren. Like unto thee, like you, like Musa. And he will, and I will put my words in his mouth. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. So he says, this I is God. You don't have to be a theologian or a DD or an evangelist. Anybody will tell you on the plain reading of it that these are not the words of Moses, these are the words of God. Another quotation from the book of Isaiah, as if God is speaking, and God is speaking. He said, remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. Who's that? Isaiah? No. No Jew says that Isaiah claimed divinity. They would have killed him if he did. No, he's speaking on behalf of God. God is speaking through him like a mouthpiece. This is the job of a prophet of God. He is a mouthpiece of God. He hears the words of God and he conveys them to you. So, I, I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is no savior besides me. Who? God. God is talking. This is the word of God. You don't have to be a professor of theology to see that. There is another type of evidence in the Bible. See, now, if it was a lecture, I would have been, done all this last night. But this is a debate. So whatever the man is throwing at you, you can't start grappling with everything. The caravan is moving, and the dogs start barking. You don't start the caravan moving back to chase the dogs. You've got to move on. You've got to do your job and get, get on with it and finish your job. There was no occasion for explaining all these things to you. You see? 
Then there is the word of the prophet of God. Example, Jesus says, it has been said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery, but I say unto you, that whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her, had committed adultery with her already in his heart. Who is this? I, Jesus. Jesus is talking, the word of a prophet of God. Again, Jesus says, it has been said by them of old time, that whosoever puts away his wife, let him give her a bill of divorcement. But I say unto you, who is this I? Jesus. Words of a prophet of God. Again, Jesus says, it has been said by them of old time, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, who is this I? Jesus. The words of a prophet of God. Then there is another type of evidence in the Bible. First was, as if God speaking. Second was, as if a prophet was speaking. Third, what does the historian how does he speak? He says, in the Gospel of St. Mark, so while he, talking about Jesus, in bracket I put Jesus, while he was going forth into the way, he, Jesus, saw a fig tree in the distance with leaves. Happily, he came up to it, wanting to find figs thereon. But when he, Jesus, came, there was nothing but leaves, for the season was not yet. Who's writing? An eyewitness or a your witness, not God and not Jesus. So you see, another type of evidence. Word of God, word of the prophet, word of the historian. And there was that other type of thing. I was suggesting, and I lost $100. You remember, if you were there, I lost $100. I wanted Brother Swaggart, you know, to read a certain chapter from the book, from the Bible. And he ignored it at first. Maybe he had no time. And somebody from the audience prodded him again. He says, you know, look, what about that chapter as a keel? And there was $100 also involved, so he read it. But he read it at 60, 60 miles an hour. <laughs> so one of your university students, while I'm sitting there, he comes to me. He said, look, he read, but uh, I didn't know. Uh, so what was the joke? I said, look, one thing is, you are at a disadvantage. You are an Arab from Arab country. You don't know English too well, number one. Number two, that the English that he was using were, was archaic, old-fashioned, from the King James Version. You see, we had given him that pamphlet, which was in, from the new international version, modern language, where you call a spade a spade. But he was reading from that archaic Bible. I can't blame him for that, because he uses that. King James, he read it. And you don't know English too well. That's also a disadvantage. And he was reading at that speed I told you just now. So these are all the facts. I said, look, what you do, you go and read it, you know, in that pamphlet and you see what he was reading. So he read it. You know, bulk of the people, I'm sure, they didn't catch the joke. You know, the speed, his pronunciation, he was not as emphatic when he quotes other biblical verses. You know, he makes every word and phrase to go down your throat or down your ears. But here was something different, 60 miles an hour. So, so <laughs> There is that type of thing, which I said, no decent man can read it to his mother, sister, daughter, or even his fiance if she's a good woman. Now, what you have to do is you have to go and read it yourself to know what was read. You didn't catch the joke. It's no fault of mine. You see, you don't understand English too well, and then, you know, there's the speed, and the archaic language, all these things were factors where you don't catch the joke. But if you catch the joke, then, you know, something that no decent man can read in his church or to his family, right? So this is, there's another type of evidence. So we have the word of God in the Bible. There is the word of the prophet in the Bible. There's the word of the historian, an eyewitness or your witness in the Bible. And there is that other type which we say pornography in the Bible. Now, we also have such a thing in Islam. We have the word of God in the Quran. Only Allah's kalam. He doesn't tell you stories. We know an incident in the life of the Prophet wasallam that a Christian deputation had come from Najran in Medina. These were Arab Christians. They had heard that another Arab, he is claiming that he's in communication with the Almighty. He's a prophet. So he said, let's go and cross-examine him. Let us go and see what he knows. So they came to Medina, and they were housed in the Masjid al Nabawi. They ate there, they slept there, and they had a dialogue there for three days and perhaps three nights. And when Sunday came, our Nabi Kareem, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he offered the masjid. 
to these Christians to offer their prayers. He was so broad-minded, not like us. See, some of us, we are, you know, we think our masjids are superior to the masjid the Nabawi that our Nabi had. No doubt, in construction, yes. He allowed them, but gave them permission to make their prayers. So during the course of this discussion, the spokesman for the Christian poses the question, among so many other things. Say, all right now, tell us, O Muhammad, what is your concept of God? And our Nabi Kareem, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he doesn't fumble. You know, well, you see, it's like this and like that. No, he doesn't do that. He is the God of Abraham, Moses, and David, and Solomon, you know, who spoke to Abraham. No, he doesn't talk like that. See, when the question is posed, what is your concept of God? So the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as if he was pressing his spiritual buttons, trying to contact Filawhim Mahfuz, the head computer. So, oh my Lord, what shall I say? Nobody heard that. There were no buttons to press. I said, as if, I hope you people understand that, then when I go away, don't create a controversy. He said, Muhammad press buttons. You know, he had a computer. I said, as if, oh my Lord, what shall I say? Comes the answer through him. Qul, say, Allahu Ahad. He is Allah, the one and only. Allah Samad, God the Eternal Absolute. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He does not beget and is not begotten. Wa lam yakul lahu kufan ahad. And there's nothing like unto him. Full stop. And you see, this is our concept of God. Now you see, it's on a different level. He is made to say, Qul, say. He's asking, Oh my Lord, what shall I say? Nobody heard him say that. But comes the answer, say. It doesn't fit into normal speech. They are asking, what is your concept of God? So you don't tell him, say. Somebody asks you, what is 12 times 12? What do you say? 144. Am I right? 6 times 6? 36. You don't say, say 36. Say 144. Do you say like that? No. Why say? Because the words are being put through his mouth. From fi lawham mahfuz. From the preserved tablet. From the head computer. See? He's in contact. He's got that machine. Spiritual buttons. Ya Bari Ta'ala is communicating. What shall I say? He says, say, who Allah Ahad. Now, that I say. Look, all these things that I told you is not in the Quran. In the Quran, you open Surah Ikhlas, chapter 112, you start. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, in the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Qul hu Allahu Ahad, say, is Allah the one and only. Allah Samad, God the eternal absolute. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He does not beget and is not begotten. Wa lam yakullahu. Kufu and Ahad, and there's nothing like unto him. Full stop. That's all. Where he was, what was the occasion, what, how did it come about? Nothing. So only the word of God. Everything else, where the details given to us later on. They said, look, this is what happened. People who were eyewitnesses, your witnesses, what's happening. What our Nabi said, what happened. All that put together is our knowledge. You find the other de details in the books of Hadith. Words of the Prophet, separate volume. Allah's Kalam, separate volume. Hadith, words of the Prophet, separate volume. History, Imam Ghazali, Ibn Rush, Ibn Taymiyyah, great writers, great writers, separate books, separate books. And our Arabian Nights, also separate books. <laughs> yes? You know the Arabian Nights? You know, fairy tales, those filthy, dirty stories were circulating around the campfire. You know, the Arabs also had something to pass time with. You know, pre-Islam, before Islam, and even maybe after Islam. You know, under Harun al-Rashid, Mamun al-Rashid, we don't know how the empire developed. And they were wanting to pass time, you know, somehow, light-heartedness, <laughs> jokes, filthy, dirty stories. You stole around the campfire, right? They're written now in books. Fitzgerald, he translated it, the Arabian Nights, the unexpurgated edition. I read it and I enjoyed it very much. It was a young boy. Oh, I loved it, you know. <laughs> the unexpurgated edition. But it's separate. It's not in the Quran. It's not in the works of the sayings of the Prophet. It's not in the works of a historian. Separate book. So we have the words of God, word of the Prophet, word of the historian, and pornography all in separate compartments. They have it all in one volume. Uh, I really love how truthful he is and I guess that's what I enjoy a lot about him. He's given all these differences, he's trying to explain the debate they had the previous 
day prior to this I think and um, I mean there's nothing wrong with stating out differences as much as there's differences there's also like the video I reacted to earlier if you've seen it um, the common de denominator between Christianity and Islam and I feel like that's what we should I personally I feel like that's what we should focus on and that way we're going to appreciate each other more um, we accept what Christ some good things about Christianity some good things about Islam and we just go with it I feel like we'll love each other more and if there's anything else that they feel like is good and you accept it but don't focus on the differences I feel like you go far in this world you know and um, he talks about how the Bible has all these different sectors but all put all have been combined in the Bible as one I see where he's going with that because children read the Bible and I don't know is it about I guess it's not about protecting the children but the fact that everything has just been dropped into the Bible you know and he questioned who gave the permission to choose certain chapters that exist in the Bible and why not the rest uh, I love the ending because he admitted he himself has also read this dirty dirty what what did he wait whatever it was you understand people that admit that yes i've actually read this thing other than trying to act perfect um i feel like they get people's attention because you're being truthful so people want to hear your truth you know don't just act holy saying oh no i just read the bible i just do this no it doesn't work like that like this i'm sure people in this audience enjoy it and enjoy his truth from experience others learn from him despite that he has read the quran as well he's read the holy book but appreciate that it doesn't have pornography in it and that's that anyway let me know what you guys think make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it to the friends and of course don't forget to subscribe if there's anything that you guys want us to react to let us know back up in the link down below and we'll be more than glad to react to it to it so i'll see you in our next or my next reaction video